What's up guys? On a trip back from Florida right now. Uh, I got a few minutes here I can talk. Um, another big question I've been getting about the pipeline. What are your options when you come in with no experience, no nothing, no certifications, no qualifications, no schools you've been to? What are your two options? There's two options. You can go in as a labor hand or a welder's helper. And I will explain both of them. They both pay about the same. And they're two completely different areas of pipeline. You'll be on the same area, like the same working area, but they're two completely different ventures of pipeline. You either go one way or another. I've done both um, because I wasn't sure which way I wanted to go. I was a labor hand first, and then I uh, was a welder's helper for a few months. Um, I will explain each one. Okay, the labor hand job is entry level on the pipeline. They call it a green hand. Um, that's somebody coming in with no experience. <clears throat> what your job is basically is to do everything they tell you to do. You're on the ground all day. Um, your job is on the ground. You're going to be wearing them boots all day and that's what you're doing. Uh, when I was a labor hand, just for the first three months on my first job, I did uh, flagging. You flag traffic. Um, you know, when they're crossing equipment over the road or unloading dozers or track hose or um, anything like that, they got flaggers that are on the road. You literally just hold up a flag, tell traffic to stop, tell them when to go. Sounds wonderful, right? No, that's the worst job you can have. At least for me, it was the worst job. Um, it gets really boring. A 10 hour day doing that. And I did it in the middle of the summer, so it was blazing hot in, in East Texas. Out there on hot asphalt with no shade, you can't sit down. Um, shitty days for me, I'd much rather be doing something else. Uh, but you won't be doing that full time. There are people that do full time flagging, they're usually women and uh, older people that can't do the manual labor aspect of pipeline. Um, those are usually ones that do flagging, but I think they want most everybody certified. You'll go through like a one or like a one day class, um, paid training. They pay you while you're getting trained on the proper ways to do flagging. Um, what else will you be doing? You will also be what is called a swamper, which is a spotter for an operator. Um, say for example i'm the operator and i'm running a track hoe and let's say today we are digging we're doing clearing work uh we're clearing topsoil um you're going to be walking right there in front of me where i can see you and you're going to be my spotter to make sure i'm not going to hit anybody else around me make sure i'm operating the track hoe safely it's not going to turn over or anything like that and you have to be in your safe area because that boom swings out, you know, 30 something feet. And um, so you have to be careful with that. So you have to watch out for your own safety and you have to be able to uh, make sure I don't hurt anybody else or get myself hurt. So it's actually a pretty big responsibility. You'll feel pretty worthless when you're sitting there doing nothing. Um, you'll feel like, man, they don't need me for this but it's a very important position. Um, so you need to take it serious. Um, what else will you be doing? You could also be on uh, you know, the, the crew that throws skids, uh, as in the skids they lay the pipes on, putting them out, picking them up. Um, you can also be doing, um, let me think, uh, Putting down marker stakes, uh, picking them up, walking, picking up trash, um, getting sticks out of the right of way because when they come through doing the clearing work um, or the finished work, there's a bunch of leftover roots and sticks and all that. All that needs to be picked up. Believe me, it's a very long day. Um, labor hands, you're, you're the bottom of the barrel out there. You're still making good money. 
Um, you know, you're going to make anywhere from fifteen to eighteen hundred a week after taxes. Um, and I don't know about you, but back home where I'm from, Mississippi, you know, six thousand dollars a month for any job is a pretty damn good amount of money. But out there, you you know that everybody else is making more than you, so you're the bottom of the barrel. Um, as far as how long will you be a labor hand before you can move up? That all depends on uh, how hard you push and the people that you work for. Um, you know, the next position up is going to be the straw boss, which is the guy in charge of the labor hands. Next above that is an operator. Next above that is a foreman. And then on up the chain then. Um, so it all depends, man. I mean, I moved up pretty quick. Uh, just by pushing myself and you know nagging my boss to get seat time on a track hoe and a dozer and then found a job that would uh, hire me on as an operator even though I didn't have much experience and I learned on that job so it all just comes down to how hard you want to push man I've seen some guys that have been labor hands for you know years I, I knew some uh, guys that have been labor hand for 10 years that's all they want to be they don't want any responsibility um, because any job further than that entails more responsibility and more risk um, so some people just want to be a labor hand and they're okay with six grand a month and that's it um, that's your option on that side of things uh, to get hired on as a labor hand you're gonna have to you know talk to a foreman or find somebody that's an operator uh, that needs a swamper a lot of a lot of operators have their own swamper that travels with them when they go to different jobs a lot of companies will already have swampers spotters um it just kind of depends if you're a good operator and you're well known around everywhere um it's easy to you know when a company hires you on say i'm bringing my own swamper and they're like, okay that's fine so you just got to build up to that experience and you're you know you got to be on time every day man that's the main thing that's the number one thing you need to be there every day when you're supposed to be there and you don't need to bullshit while you're there and then go home when you're done or go to your camper or go to your hotel or where, wherever you're staying um, the other side of things a welder's helper also entry level um, it's a little bit harder to get in as a welder's helper because there's less welding helper positions than there are labor hand positions if I had to just rough estimate I'd say you know labor hands are five to one over uh, welders helpers um, you know you just got to find somebody that needs a welders helper man and uh, somebody that's willing to take in a green helper that doesn't have experience the guy that took me on um, I didn't have any experience in the very first day you know he get frustrated with me uh, for the first two, three days because I didn't even like when he'd say pass me a, a rod and he'd tell me the sizes and he'd tell me to grind and bevel and I'm like, I don't even know what any of this means much less am I able to do it correctly. So I just told him that, um, you know, I will, uh, I'll learn it and I'm one of those type of people where you only got to show me once and uh, I'm not going to hassle you about it anymore. I'm just going to do it. Sorry, I had to get in front of that truck because it narrowed down to one lane. But yeah, you show me once, I pick up on it and I get better at it from there. I'm not going to, you don't have to remind me two or three times how to do one thing. Um, welder's helper job it, 10 times easier than labor hand in my opinion um, almost no physical work period um, you know you're out in the elements you have to be quick with uh, with your welder when he needs some when you get set up on a pipe um, the welder's job is to weld that's it that's his job and your job is to do everything else to make his life easier to all he has to do as well that's what you're getting paid for so when you pull up to a pipe or a joint or anything your job is to get all the leads out to get the bucket out with the welding rods to get the grinder out the extension cord 
um, you know, to put down his, uh, put down his damn mud thing or whatever the thing he sits on. Can't remember the name of it right now, but, and then you have to be there right next to him. Then you got to clean it, uh, you know, do an initial cleaning. And then after he gets done welding, which you're handing him the rods the entire time, but he's not even looking. Um, plus you got to control, you know, the voltage and stuff. It's, there's 10 different things you got to do at one time, but once you become efficient with it, it becomes a lot easier. Um, and then once you and your welder get on the same page and y'all just mesh together like that, there's nothing else that even needs to be spoken really. Um, he's just going to say up or down and that means crank it up, crank it down the voltage, um, on his, on his welding. And then everything else should just flow pretty smooth. Welders helpers spend a, or welders in general, spend a lot of time in their trucks. Um, there was very few days that we worked, you know, hours on top of hours. There were some where we did, you know, 10, 12 hour days. But a lot of times we'd sit in the truck for three or four hours, hop out and work for half an hour, and then hop back in for three and four hours, you know, playing on your phone, taking a nap or whatever. Um, because it's only as fast as they allow you to go. Um, there's a lot of downtime being a welder and a welder's helper, but you get paid the whole time. Um, so that's the two different entry level positions in um, pipeline. And depending on which way you want to go, of course, everybody wants to, everybody sees the welders. The welders make the most money. Um, when it comes to next level welders helper going to welder, and then labor hand going to operator and even foreman, welder makes more than both of them. Welder makes more than a foreman or an operator. Um, you know, they make anywhere from four to $6,000 a week, but they earn that money. Um, you know, they work their way up to where they are. It wasn't given to them. They have a lot of money invested in what they do. I mean, they have their own truck. They use their own personal truck their own welding machine, which can cost up to $15,000. Uh, another $10,000 on, uh, you know, a custom bed, one of those welding beds that holds all your shit back there. Another 10 grand on odds and ends, uh, tools, equipment, leads. I mean, all the stuff you need, grinders, and then uh, the wear and tear on your own truck. So that's why they get paid so much. The skills that they have along with the mobility because I mean they're out there anywhere from snow to mud to sun to rain doesn't matter that truck is their money maker it's completely mobile they don't have to plug in anything um, everything they do can be done from the bed of that truck so that's why they get paid so much and then most of them also haul a camper with the truck I mean they usually have a gooseneck on there and they haul their camper <clears throat> to wherever they're staying So as a welder's helper, you need to respect their property. You know, you're not tearing, you're not throwing around a grinder that belongs to the pipeline company. That belongs to the welder. Um, or if you're hopping in his, you know, his nice truck with your muddy ass boots and dirt on your ass and everything, and you're sliding over a seat, that you know, a, a good welder will let you eat, his, eat your lunch in there and sit in there. Some of them will make you get your ass out and eat. Um, I, I was lucky and had a good welder. Um, he was, I mean, he was 15 years younger than me, but he, he talked with, he talked to me with respect. He didn't talk down to me. Um, and he taught me a lot about his side of the business. <clears throat> and he, I mean, we stayed in his truck and, you know, I, but I've seen some welders that are assholes and those are the ones that go through a welder's helper every damn job instead of keeping one. Usually once you latch on to a welder, you know, you're basically an apprentice. They're going to teach you the ways of welding and then when it's time, you, you, you break out, um, which is uh, you become a welder. So that time frame can be anywhere from a year to a few years depending on how fast you learn and how fast you get a truck outfitted because you have to have your own equipment you have to have your own truck your own machine um you know that's one thing that you have to look forward to invest to me as an operator 
I don't have to have any money invested at all. Uh, I make less than a welder, but I can take my big dually out there or I can take the Honda CRV. Hell, I used to drive my wife's Shelby GT350 to the job site and hop on the company's, you know, Cat 336 and go to work. Um, so it doesn't matter what you drive. Uh, it's always good to have a truck on pipeline. You don't want to be stuck out there in a car or a two wheel drive SUV. You really, really, really need a truck um, just all around. Um, or at least a four wheel drive SUV at minimum. But those are your two options and um, they're completely different paths. So why did I choose the operator side as in the labor hand to an operator instead of welder's helper to welder? Um, it was just a faster opportunity. You know, I was a, I was an operator in three months. That's very, very, very uncommon. You know, I faked it till I made it a little bit. You know, I kind of stretched what I was capable of um, in my experience level. But you know, once I sat in a seat, the the foreman on the job could tell that I was a rookie, but he could tell that I had potential and I wasn't dangerous to other people. Um, they're they're not dumb. You can't just lie your way on the pipeline. Um, like you can't just come out because you've been working on your daddy's farm or you've been working DOT road crew on an excavator and hop on pipeline. The ways of the, and the same with a welder. You could be a you could come out there and be Jesse James and some top notch welder. If you've never welded on pipeline, you have to start as a helper because the ways of the pipeline are completely different than working in a shop or working in a factory or working at your house. Um, yes, you will advance faster because you already have experience, but everybody starts from the bottom. Everybody, everybody. They don't have people that come out there as operators that have never been on pipeline before. And it's just, uh, it doesn't happen. It can't happen. Um, you know, you gotta learn how to dig bell holes, ditch, hotlines, clearing work. You know, you got you gotta learn stuff that you don't know. Um, regardless if you've been on a track hoe or a dozer for 15 years at home, you don't know the pipeline. And they're not gonna let you put, you know, all these people's lives at risk because you think you know better. Um, take your time, man. You're making good money while you're at the bottom. It's not like you're making minimum wage or anything. Like I said, anywhere between 15 to 1800 a week after taxes. That's after taxes now. Um, that's pretty fucking solid in my book. So those are your two choices. Um, simple as that, man. That's that's the two avenues you can take on pipeline. Like I said, this isn't oil field. You know, oil field and pipeline. When you're in the oil field pipeline, those are two different jobs. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, pipeline is the one end of the oil field and then refineries and all that stuff and rigs. When, when you're on pipeline, you don't say I work in, you don't say you work in the oil field. You say you work pipeline. And when you work, you know, on a, on a rig or a refinery or in a plant or offshore, you say you work oil field. So I see people critiquing me on my terminology a lot. People that have far more experience on both of them than I do. I'm just speaking from my experience and what I've learned. So my terminology may not be up to par for, for somebody that's been doing it for 30 years, but it is what it is. I think I get my point across pretty good. So um, this is about pipeline, man. It's about pipeline. It, it's booming right now. Um, I think it's going to stay booming if, if as long as Trump gets reelected, it'll stay booming. And I'm not bringing politics into this, but drill, baby, drill. That's uh, that's Trump. You know, that's a lot of money out there. A lot of fa a lot of families being supported off of uh, his policies. If somebody else gets elected, I'm not sure how it'll turn out, honestly. But anyway, if you're looking for a job, the best thing I can tell you: go to oilfieldjobshop.com. I'll post the uh, I'll post the link in the description of this video. Click on that link. Go check out what they got on their website. Follow them on Instagram, on Facebook. You can send them a message. Uh, they're good people. I've been working together with them for uh, about a year now. Oilfilledjobshop.com. Appreciate you guys tuning in, and uh, be sure to comment. Let me know what you, what else y'all want me to do a video about. Appreciate it, guys. Enjoy your day.